Good day and welcome to the first Property Group PLC interim results for the six months to the 30th of September. Today's conference is being recorded. At this time, I would like to turn the conference over to Ben Habib, Chief Executive of First Property Group PLC. Please go ahead, sir. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for attending our interim results announcement uh, meeting. Um, before I start, I've just got a couple of things to say. The first is that the presentation which I will be going through is on our website. If you go to the PLC tab and then click on Investor Relations, you should find Investor Presentations. Um, under the PLC tab, you should find the presentation that I'm looking at. Um, and then the other thing I would like to say is that um, we will take questions at the end. I will gallop through the presentation. Um, and I would prefer to have more time on questions than me talking, but um, we'll take questions at the end. So if you have been able to access the presentation, um, I'm going to start on page three, which sets out what our business model is. For those of you who are familiar with the group, you will already know that our business model is effectively to raise third-party pools of capital from clients to invest alongside our clients um, and to derive performance for the group through fees paid by these funds as well as um, returns made on our own investment in those funds. And indeed, we do on occasion make direct investments where those um, investments don't conflict with any fund management mandates we have. Um, turning over to page Five, which is the meat, really, of what we've announced this morning. Um, shareholders will instantly see that profits were up 184% compared to last year, um, for reasons which I will come to in a moment, but a very good first half year for the group. Diluted earnings per share up um, by 220%, um, and on the strength of those results, we've increased the dividend by 6%, from 0.33 pence to 0.35 pence. The growth in our profit has come from both our fund management side as well as um, our direct interests, or what we call group properties, um, which are up by 106% and 234% res respectively. As shareholders will know, we earn most of our fee income in euros, and these growths in profit um, and EPS and dividends and so on has all come against a backdrop of actually a weakening euro. So we've had, we've had headwinds um, for our profits, but we've still grown quite dramatically during the year. Net assets for the group are up by 37% along with retained earnings earned during the period. Our cash balances are a very healthy 12% million pounds, and I'll come back to the cash balance as well in, the, in a moment, but our cash balances are, are very healthy. Um, gross debt for the group has increased a lot, 126% on the back of um, deals that FPROP Opportunities PLC has done, as well as deals that First Property Group PLC itself has done. I should just remind shareholders um, and listeners that um, all our debt is ring-fenced in the entities which carry the investments on which the debt is secured. So none of this debt is recourse debt to First Property Group PLC. Um, and when I talk about a cash balance of £12 million, that is a cash balance of £12 million to which we have access. So it's not stuck in subsidiaries, you know, subject to bank liens or anything like that. That's, that's our cash balance. Assets under management during the year dropped by 9%, mostly as a result of property sales that various funds made. Um, there was some uh, value reduction as well as euro sterling translation reduction as a result of the weaker euro, um, but the reduction was mostly as, as a result of sales. 66% of our assets under management are in Poland and, 30, uh, and 34% in the UK. So just turning over to page six and going through the reasons why our profits were up um, so dramatically. The principal reason 
was a performance fee or profit share, depending on how you'd like to term it, of £1.9 million that the group earned on um, the returns it generated for investors in SBROP PDR. SBROP PDR, as you will recall, um, was a fund we set up in October 2013 to, um, to use for, for, for its investors' benefit the new legislation that the government had passed for the conversion of offices to residential um, in May 2013. Um, we made something like 23 odd million pounds worth of investments on behalf of that fund um, up to and including um, the period to 30th September, which we sold for around um, 28 million pounds. Um, generating a net profit after the deduction of our profit share of 7.7 .7 million for shareholders in that, in that fund. So we've had a really good run with FPROP PDR. Um, we've also had a good run with group properties. Um, as you'll recall, we bought a couple of properties last year, a shopping center in Ostrovich and, and an office block in Lublin in FOP. Um, they contributed £585,000 to our pre-tax profit for the period of 30th September. Last year, the contribution was nil because we hadn't made those investments. We also um, increased our share of the Blue Tower office block that we own in Warsaw, and the profit generated from that investment um, during the period was £741,000 as compared to £566,000 last year. And then... Um, the last contributing and not insignificant, but last contributing factor to the increase in our profit was the acquisition we made of three properties in Romania, which were subject to bank debt, which we renegotiated and refinanced. And on the basis of that refinancing, we, we repaid the bank debt at a, at a value which was below its face value. And on, on doing so, we um, uh, were, we had to recognize um, through our profit and loss statement, negative goodwill of £1.12 million. And that is a non-cash item. And in many respects, uh, shareholders may wish to, I certainly do, write that out of the profit line when I consider what FBROP truly made as a profit, because that's a non-cash profit. But um, for accounting reasons, we have to recognize it. Um, so really, a, you know, Good performance on, from all parts of the business in the first half. Interim dividend increased by 6% to 0.35 cents per share um, versus last year's payout at this time of 0.33 pence per share. Um, and as I'm accustomed to saying at these meetings now, we're very proud of our dividend history. Um, we've paid a dividend throughout the period of the credit crunch. We've raised no new money from shareholders during the period of the credit crunch. Um, and we've increased our dividend during the period of the credit crunch. So I'm not sure that makes us a unique property company, but it certainly makes us quite a special one. Um, and I'm very pleased that we've been able to increase our dividend again this year. Turning over to a more detailed analysis of funds under management and group properties on page 9, um, you will see in bar chart format the effect of the profit increases that I've just run through. So FPAM, which is our fund management side, profits up to pre-tax profits up to £2.9 million from £1.4 million last year, and group properties up to £2.97 million um, as compared to £890,000 last year. And just to reiterate, of that growth in group profit, profit group properties profit, um, 1.1 million is, um, is a non, 1.12 million is a non-cash item from the refinancing of those Romanian properties. I should also add that FBROP PDR declared a dividend um, during the period, which would, which for the for the group's benefit was three hundred ninety thousand pounds, but we only recognised dividends as and when received, and it was received in the second half of the year, so after the period end, and is not recognised in these figures, therefore, and will come through in the figures for the year to thirty first March, twenty fifteen. 
Um, page 10 sets out a synopsis of the various funds that we manage. Um, the largest fund on the sheet, the USS FBROP Managed Port Property Portfolio, expires in August 2015. Um, if you compare the value of the assets under management now in that fund compared to what it was last year, you'll see quite a marked reduction. That's because the fund has been selling property during the period. It has sold seven properties, um, all of which have been bought either by FOP or First Property Group PLC. And um, we believe that the question mark over the group's long-term profitability arising from the expiry of that fund has now been answered um, and no longer exists, in my opinion. We have sufficient earnings independently of that fund now to go past its expiry with confidence as a group. Um, we're obviously still dependent on it, and there are um, for, for part of our profit, and there are more sales that will take place. But our own internal assessment is that we will go past the expiry of that fund in very good shape now. Um, UK Pension Property Portfolio is our next largest fund, which expires in February 2017, and that is doing extremely well. It, it's done all along what it said it would do on the tin, um, which is produce a dividend yield for shareholders of north of 6%, and it continues to do that. Uh, an income-based fund, capital values have oscillated a bit. They're up now. They were slightly down last year, but they're up now. Um, and we expect that trend to continue in view of what's happening in the UK property market. FOP's assets under management have increased during the period as a result of the purchases it made last year, um, and we would expect FOP um, to increase slightly from its current level um, when its most recent acquisition, which was made on 19 September, but doesn't feature in these figures because it was the subject of refinancing and we didn't feel able to increase, um, we didn't feel able to recognize its presence in FOP until we'd gone through the refinancing. Um, but once it is refinanced, um, that office block in Warsaw will effectively render FOP fully invested. Um, and we think FOP owns a, 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 you know, a number of very nice properties now in Poland which would generate high returns for its shareholders. Um, FBROP PDR, as I mentioned, had a very good, good run. The AUM figure for FBROP PDR is slightly academic because it's a trading fund, it's not an investment fund. It currently owns two properties, uh, which we would expect to dispose of in the next um, six to nine months. Whether or not we're able to dispose of them in the year to 31st March 2015 remains to be seen, but that would be our endeavor. Um, we are continuing to look for new properties for FBROP PDR, but the landscape has become more competitive. Um, and also the legislation which um, allows FBROP PDR to exist, the permitted development rights legislation, <coughs> is due to expire in May 2016. So the window of opportunity for FBROP PDR is closing. Um, we will obviously monitor any changes that may take place in the legislation, um, but we're not expecting, unless things change on the legislative front, any significant increases in purchases by FBROP PDR over the next few months. Um, Page 11 sets out in diagrammatic format um, the percentages of the funds that we manage um, by fund name, by type of client, and by geographic spread. Um, I don't intend to go through it in detail. I think it's um, self-explanatory. Um, turning to group properties and just looking at what we've now got in perhaps slightly greater detail, we own 48.2% of Blue Tower in Warsaw. This, as you might recall, is a Class B building, but in an absolutely prime location of Warsaw, perhaps, you know, I would argue one of the best locations in Warsaw. 
um, let on very low rents to tenants who otherwise wouldn't be able or prepared to pay the sort of rents that would give them a prime location in Warsaw. We expect it to continue to perform given its resilient sort of rent levels. Um, it's been a superb performer for the group, throwing off something like 50% rate of return on equity every year since we bought it in December 2008, and we expect that performance to continue. We have one lease expiry coming up in, towards the end of February next year, but we have a number of tenants looking at the space that's coming up um, at that time, and we would expect to relet it in fairly short order. Now we've just acquired three properties in Romania. Two, two of these three properties are industrial facilities, um, one in Ploiesti and one in Tireni, for those of you who know the geography of Romania. And the third is an office block in the heart of Bucharest. Um, our intention for these three properties to, is to hold them for income for the meantime. We've just refinanced them. There's a reasonably heavy amortization uh, profile associated with the debt, and it's our intention to pay the debt down using the income of the properties over the next three or four years, and then to effect a sale of those properties um, at an opportune moment. Um, the third leg of our, our direct holdings are current mm -hmm. investment in five of the seven funds we manage, details of which are on the next page. Um, and turning to the next page, you'll see that UK PPP generated a dividend for us of about £30,000 during the period, not of about, of exactly £30,000 during the period. Um, fifth property trading and regional property tradings where we own significant interests are treated as associates in our accounts, so we take our proportionate share of the profits those companies make, and they contributed an aggregate of £107,000 during the period. And then we consolidate FPROP Opportunities PLC or FOP, we consolidate that, and the profit we made um, from our 76% ownership of FOP, so that's after deducting the minority interest, um, was £607,000 roughly during the period. Um, and as I mentioned, we will be getting a dividend of 390, or we will be, we've got it, we will be recognizing a dividend. Um, of £390,000 from FROP PDI in the second half of the year. Um, and page 14 pictorially represents what I've just given you. Um, and just to emphasize that these are these, these figures, your graphs you're looking at, are group property graphs. They're not, so these, these represent our interest in the fund. They don't represent the fund performance for us of fees, which is covered under our asset management side, which I've already been through. Um, so just turning to Outlook, um, Poland, this is page 16 for those of you following the presentation, Poland has done exceptionally well throughout the credit crunch. Since 2009, its GDP has grown 16% and expected to grow again this year by around just over 3% with another 3% next year. This very healthy macroeconomic picture has translated into robust um, rent levels in our portfolio and we've suffered a number of delinquencies but nothing like the sorts of delinquencies that UK owners of property suffered during that period. Um, we have very few late payers of rent in our portfolio I think we might have a, a late payment schedule of around 100,000 euros out of a 22 million euro income stream, which is you know close to nothing. Um, so we're very pleased with Poland's performance as, a, as an economy so far. Inflation is low. It's not without its question marks, given the slowdown of growth in Europe, the slowdown particularly, obviously, of the German economy, which is very important to Poland, and, of course, the headwinds that are tangentially created by what's happening in Ukraine. I say tangentially because actually Poland has very little trade with Ukraine and Russia, but um, the imposition of sanctions, like any sort of financial effect, has a domino, um, you know, has a domino effect, the results of which aren't always obvious when you 
look at the um, picture on a preliminary basis. So we're waiting to see what that fallout might be going forward. Um, uh, interest rates are low on the back of the low inflation in Poland. The Zloty has been very stable. It's strengthened recently, actually, from a sort of 4.25-ish, where it's been hanging around for a while, to 4.18, I think, this morning. Um, again, that's against the euro. Um, against sterling, it's strengthened while we've been in Poland from just north of six lotties to the euro uh, to, 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 to the pound to about 5.3, I think, at the moment. Um, for what it's worth, the prime minister, the ex-prime minister of Poland, has been um, made the EU's next president. Um, I'm not sure whether that's a good thing for Poland or a bad thing, but anyway, that's what's happened. There are elections next year in Poland. Um, the political landscape is a bit nebulous. PO, which would be our favoured party to, re to retain government, uh, has lost its position slightly in the polls, but we'll you know, remain to see what happens in 2015. Um, the commercial property market, as I said, we've experienced a pretty good run during the credit crunch. Um, occupational demand is held up, but there has been a massive supply of new offices in Warsaw, particularly in the south and the western parts of Warsaw, which has led to an increase in vacancy of about 13%. Uh, to 13%. We don't expect that to affect our blue tire investment or our other investments in, in Warsaw, which are central and on low rents, and I think will see off the competition from these newer, less well-located um, developments. There is, you know, for what it's worth as a market commentator, I would urge my development colleagues in Poland to cease developing new properties in Warsaw. I don't think they're going to have a very good experience from it. Um, the same has happened with shopping centers in the regions. Um, if you read the um, various reports written on retail, uh, the saturation or otherwise of retail in Poland, most commentators argue that there's still room for growth, but actually I would say that, I would say that most large conurbations in Poland already are oversupplied with retail. What's interesting about the Polish economy, and I think you have to take it on board when you're buying retail, is that there's an increase in the population of Warsaw by around 4% per annum, and that is at the expense of the regions. And, you know, you have to factor that in when you're buying retail property in the regions and factor it in when you're buying retail property in, po in Warsaw, which is, which is incredibly robust. I think the vacancy rate for retail property in Warsaw is around 0%. Um, Industrial, not really our thing. We don't really buy industrial property. Um, very difficult in our experience to get it right. Um, but again, there's been healthy demand, though vacancy rates have been pretty high in my experience over the credit crunch period. Um, as I say, it's something we wouldn't really look at. Banks are well capitalized and continue to lend. It's quite interesting because banks, are more prepared to lend perhaps than investors are to buy, and that creates opportunities where if you're able to buy properties at a reasonable price, you shouldn't have too much difficulty financing or refinancing them. And that's obviously very good for us as a buyer of um, opportunistic property. So all in all, notwithstanding the oversupply of offices and and retail in certain parts of the country, you know, we are we remain bullish about Poland's medium and long-term prospects. Um, we're very pleased with the way the United Kingdom has gone recently. Um, GDP growth is up. Um, perhaps the healthiest major economy, not perhaps, the healthiest major economy in Europe. Um, confidence is up in the United Kingdom. Um, inflation is low. We think interest rates will stay lower than lower for longer than most people expect. Um, on the back of that, we think buying UK commercial property must make sense. Um, we're slightly moving away from our very tin hat, recessionary orientated
strategy and looking at the broader landscape of UK commercial property. So we're looking again at um, short lease property where we think we can add value through um, through asset management initiatives. We haven't looked at the short lease property for a long time and the first time we looked at it again was when the legislation was changed to introduce permitted development rights, where obviously we were buying vacant property. But I think that the government is now firmly behind um, behind development, and the gov irrespective of whether permitted development rights expire, we are confident that the government is going to be fairly firm with local authorities and ensure that planning applications and permissions are speeded through in a way perhaps that they haven't been, not perhaps, they haven't been. I mean, the planning landscape in this country became absolutely abhorrent. Um, you know, over the 10-year period that Labour was in power, you know, we went from being able to get planning permission in a reasonably short order to actually being put off quite seriously from buying property simply because planning was such a restrictive, protracted, painful experience not to mention expensive experience. And um, so we're very, very pleased that the Conservatives have done the right thing and deregulated it. And I think as long as they get re-elected, which we hope they will, um, that, will that impetus will, will continue. Um, obviously, we have got an election coming up next year. That does raise a few question marks over what happens post-election, but it's hard to imagine Ed Miliband as Prime Minister of this country. Um, and as long as we have a Conservative government, we think that the economy and the, and the property market will be set fair. Um, and we will continue to therefore look at, as I said, a slightly broader array of properties in the UK for investment purposes compared to the sorts that we were looking at before. So outlook for the group. <laughs> Um, as I mentioned, I, the USS contract expires in August 2015, but I don't think that poses, that poses any longer a question mark for, for the group. We will go through that expiry with good, visible, sustainable profit lines. Um, we expect to make further investments as we go through this and next year. Um, and so we look to the future with confidence as far as our Polish activities are concerned and indeed our UK activities. The, the landscape for FROP PDR is more competitive and the window is closing but there will be other opportunities and um, you know we continue to work on raising new UK mandates about which I hope we will be reporting to you positively in the not too distant future. And that is everything I have to say so can I please now open it up to questions. Thank you. If you would like to ask a question at this time, please press the star or asterisk key followed by the digit 1 on your telephone. Please ensure that the mute function on your phone is switched off to allow your signal to reach our equipment. A voice prompt on your phone line will indicate when your line is open to ask a question. Please state your name before posing your question. Again, please press star 1 to ask a question. We will pause for just a moment to allow everyone to signal. Any questions in the room in the meantime? Now that you can see through the USS expiry, what, what I'm, I've noticed obviously you've put the dividend up by a bit more than you have in the last few years. What's, what's the thinking on dividend policy going forward with the strong income generation that you're, you're now uh, getting? Well, we've always said that we would increase the dividend as our profits grow, and we sort of targeted two and a half times cover. So as our profits grow, we will increase the dividend. And... Um, um, you know, that's what we'll do. Our profits have grown quite dramatically um, in the first half, but on the back of one-offs, if you like. Sure. And um, so we didn't feel able to increase our dividend by a couple of hundred percent, even though our profits <laughs> have gone up by a couple of hundred percent. Um, the other thing to bear in mind, of course, is that the properties bought by FOP and the remaining properties bought by ourselves are secure, you know, are mortgaged and that debt does have to be serviced. So the pre-tax profit needs to pay tax, and then it needs to pay back some of that debt every year. 
And whereas before our profits were more pure cash that we could pay out to shareholders, we do have to service debt in a way that we didn't have to before. And so we do need to take that on board. Um, so we need to grow our profits perhaps a little more in order to get the free cash flow cover required to pay divvies. Um, but our current dividend level and indeed increasing it a bit is more than covered by, um, um, by the state of the profitability of the group at the moment. The net profits are... So you see yourself heading towards two and a half times <coughs> cover on a sort of sustainable... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, we're already there. We're already two and a half times cover, I think, more or less. Yeah. Um, and I think we will, we will start exceeding that quite, quite soon and then we will increase the dividend. Um, you know, I look forward to that day. And the other thing to just mention while I'm on it is that for those of you who've looked at our balance sheet in detail, you'll see debtors is up quite a lot during the period. And that's because the 2 million or the 1.9 million uh, profit that we made from PDR was recognized in the period but wasn't paid in the period. So the 12 million cash balance that you're looking at is actually really 14 million. Um, so we've gone through 2013 where we made quite a few investments. can't remember the figure, but I think we invested about 7.5 million last year, didn't we? Um, I'm pretty certain yeah, it was 7.5 yeah, million. Yeah. million. Yeah. At least I was 4.5. Yeah, and we've made more investments this year, and we are still cashed up. And that is brilliant. brilliant. Shareholders, it should bring a smile to shareholders' <laughs> faces. <laughs> Any other questions in the room? Any questions on the telephone? And no, there are no questions queuing up on the telephone. Okay, well, if there are no questions, I think we'll draw the meeting to an end. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending. And... Um, you know, look forward to speaking to you again in June. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. That will conclude today's conference call. Thank you for your participation, ladies and gentlemen. You may now disconnect.